I got something to say. How is your week, baby? How are my ladies doing around the world? And the men watching. You know what I didn't realize? I think next week is International Women's Week. I don't know if there's a specific day, but all I know is there's tons of things going on all over the place about honoring women from around the world. I'm so pumped. Today, Nina, who I see is watching, all she has to do, a button's going to come up and she's going to request in. So when she requests in, I'm going to bring you one of the most wonderful human beings in the world. She's awesome. I was on her show, I think, I don't even know if it was like a year ago. I think it was called Straight Talk, No Sugar Added, and she was awesome. She did request the button then. I, was to, I tried to call her before and say, listen, this is how you do it, and I wasn't sure it was going to work. Work, but she's here, baby, so she's going to be coming in. I'm so excited. Oh, I love the green, green baby. I'm good. We were just How talking about that. Good. Yes, yes, so fun. Uh, we had you on Straight Talk, No Sugar Added. Yeah, it, yeah I, I can't even awesome. remember how long ago that was. It was a while ago. Yeah, it was probably about a year ago. I, I want to right. hear all yeah. that you're up to. But before we do that, because I'm sure there's been a lot going on, and I'm waving to all your friends and family, <laughs> I want to tell them a little bit about you, which doesn't even scratch the surface. But Nina is a transformational life coach. She empowers self-led, heart-centered women to transcend their shame so they, they can be confident, self-actualize their true potential, amen, sister, and create the life and business they've always wanted. Welcome, Nina's in the house. All right, let's get right into it, Nina. One <laughs> word, give me, baby. Let's One word let's get to it. best describe your past 30 days. What would the word be, good, bad, or ugly, and why? Transformation. Okay. Transformation. Tell us why. That's my word. Yeah. And, and because in the last 30 days, well, I, I don't know if you can see, I have a strap on, but I've had a surgery in my Ooh. arm and my shoulder. And what it's done is it gave me pause. It gave me time to pause, which I don't normally do. Um, not on a long-term basis. I'm six weeks out of my, you know, director job and I had to pause and pausing was good. It helped me to transform the way I was thinking, um, especially with the impact I want to make in the world and with the women that I work with. So transformation is definitely the way. All right. So tell them now a little bit about all the things you are doing in the world. And by the way, I did not know this. It, next week is International Women's Week. Did you know that? And so, mm -hmm. so happy yeah. we're having you, you on yeah. today. So tell them a little bit about because you do so many different <laughs> amazing things. Tell them what you're doing now. Thank you. Well, right now I just um, uh, completed or starting to complete this methodology that I'm doing with women. And I, you know, I was helping women with businesses and launching like um, coaching businesses and podcasts and all that kind of stuff. And I was like, you know what? I realized that for me, Sandy, I did not get to where I am today just by coming up with a business plan. I actually had to do a lot of inner work. And so I took all of my years, I have 20 something years of spiritual, um, you know, count of, of coaching and I am a NLP master practitioner. I'm a life coach. I also have my certifications in positive intelligence and uh, emotional intelligence and all of that. Right. So I said, you know what, with all the work I've done on myself, how did I get to where I am? And it was because mm. I had to do a lot of inner stuff. Inner work had to come first. So I, I started dealing with a lot of the toxic shame in my life. Um, the belief systems that I had around myself or my emotions, and I had to start reconnecting all of that. Then I realized, okay, so we're going to do some inner work with women now because I need women to mm. let go of all of that toxic stuff that they have in their life so that they can start transcending. And transcending means, you know, living in what love and truth is for them, finding out what their real true core values are, what they're bringing up, where they are today, but where they want to be. And also setting some 
visions and goals for their life, right? Designing the life the way they want to, because we get stuck. We get stuck too much, you know, we get stuck. And so I was like, you know, so I, I, I developed this whole wheel and it's all about inner, inner healing, transcending. And then we go into co-creation and co-creation means me, them, and the creator working together on frameworks, building curriculums, um, you know, having a lean life and business plan. So I have uh, the, the methodology is called mastering your game mm -hmm. and game is an acronym for uh, goals, um, awareness. I'm sorry, it's growth, awareness, mind flow, and emotional intelligence. Um, I call it mind flow because I feel like when we say mindset, it's too much about getting set in our ways already. So I'm talking about, I'm talking about flowing, you know, I want to flow, I want to grow. I want something that you say to me to make me think, hmm, maybe I should look at it on that angle as opposed to just being set all the time and not moving forward. So I don't call it mindset, I call it mind flow. But that's basically what I'm working on right now. First of all, it's a lot. And secondly, I love the acronym GAME. I love it. It, it, Thank you. it rocks. So many questions came in for you and I told them you were coming on. So we're, we're gonna get okay. to some of them. Um, we only got 30 minutes, but the biggest one I got was around mm -hmm. guilt and women feel a lot of guilt. And the one, mm -hmm. one that I want to read, mm -hmm. and we always call them Sally Bell. We make up names is the woman. And I, and I so relate to this woman. She's like, tell Nina, I think I'm pretty good when it comes to knowing that guilt doesn't serve me well, but, when family members are suffering, mm -hmm. either parents or children, I can't help but feeling mm -hmm. I'm responsible. Please help. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the first thing I'm going to say to you is to get some evidence around that thought. So if you're saying that you're responsible, what's the evidence of that? Mm -hmm. What is the actual true evidence that you're responsible? right? Because unless you hurt them physically, like when it hurt them or whatever, are you really responsible, right? And so what we do is we, because, uh, and I'm just going to speak up to women, uh, we take on a lot. We take on a lot of not only our guilt, everybody else's guilt, not only our shame, everybody else's shame, you know, and I, and we need to, we need to, I call it right sizing the devil, right? You need to right wait a minute, size wait the devil. So put wait, them in say the that again, that they belong. the right side of the devil. I call it, uh, no, right-sizing the devil. Right-size the devil. In other words, all these, all these bad things that come at you, right-size the devil. You know what I'm saying? Like, not, not everything is on you. Not everything is, is, is for you. And what happens is, too, is that our brain starts to develop a way in that we take on stuff that's not even ours, right? So, for example, when somebody's not, you know, somebody in the family is going through something or everything, for you to take on that guilt, you need to ask yourself, A, why do you take on that guilt? And is there any evidence to back up why you're taking on that guilt, right? Because, be, because my my mom suffered or my, my sister or whoever are suffering, is that really my guilt, you know, or, or are they responsible for themselves? You know, so we have to really right size the devil, as I put it, I right size it. the ideas, right size the thought and ask yourself if that's really truly valid. It, does it actually have evidence and proof in your life? See, truth doesn't care about your feelings, right? Mm -hmm. Truth is truth, right? So if, if you can, can come up up and look at the truth of what that situation is then you can break it down you know uh did you say something evil or mean that hurt them then maybe that is your your um your fault if you will and maybe that's something you apologize for or you shift because that's another thing too is yes there's two types of guilt and two types of shame i call it so there's the shame that we do ourselves when we do something to someone we should be ashamed of ourselves because it helps you to shift your what you're doing it helps you not be that person, right? Then there's the shame that somebody did to you and you also take that on. That is not yours, right? So that's when you realize there are things that you're responsible for and there are things you are absolutely not responsible for, right? And sometimes you have, you could talk yourself through it 
or you can have somebody who you're you're very um, close to or a coach or somebody, a therapist, whatever, but you need to right size the devil and not take on I'm gonna use that. Yourself. I love that. <laughs> you have all these great things, Nina. Yeah, I'm like, John, now I know what she means. I know what she means. <laughs> all right, let's get to it then. When I ask you for your one statement, you wanna tell women around the world, you are not alone. You are, in capital letters, not whatever happened to you. You can choose to become free to be your authentic self. Woo! Yeah. Why'd you pick that one? Because for a long time, I thought I was alone, right? So uh, if anybody's watching or whatever and has read my book, they know that I have been rejected, abused, almost murdered, all of that, raped, all of that since... I was a child, right? And I, I felt alone for a very long time. And it wasn't until I found my voice and realized that I'm not alone and that my story is not for me. My story doesn't belong to me anymore. My story belongs to whatever woman mm -hmm. needs it to move forward, right? And so you are not alone and you are 100% not what, whatever happened to you. You are 100% not that. And we need to be kinder to ourselves, Sandy. Mm -hmm. We are not kind to ourselves in a lot of situations. So we beat ourselves up, but we would never do that to a friend of ours. If a friend of ours said to me, listen, I was raped or I was molested or I was whatever it was, and they're coming to you, you would have empathy. You would Absolutely. have empathy for that person. You would have compassion for that person. You would love on that person. But yet to ourselves, mm -hmm. we don't do that, right? But you, my friend, are not alone. You are not here alone. You are definitely not a sum of whatever's happened to you because every single day that you wake up, you make a decision. You make a decision to change, to be something better, or you make a decision to stay the same. That's on you, right? I feel like if we have another opportunity because me and you are not promised tomorrow, then let's make it count. Let's make it count. Let's make it happen. You're not alone. And you are not what you yesterday was yesterday. It, it, it has it own, it had its own problems. It has its own worries. It had his own situations. Today will bring its own. So today, just deal with today because you're not promised later. So we just got to Nina, I know a little bit about your story, but for those that don't, uh, tell them the name of your book and where they can find it. Yeah, so the book is called Hit Me With Your Best Shot, How I Overcame a Hard-Hitting Life. And it is everywhere, really, anywhere you can buy a book. But uh, I sell it on Amazon, but it's in they wanna, all Barnes & Noble. No, how long did it take yeah. you to come out with your story? Because you said for many years you felt alone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, most of my life. I, I came out with the book only uh, oh, wow. maybe five yeah. years ago, right? So, it's, it, yeah, so it, it took me some time. Um, I, I, I trinkled it in because, like I said, I've been spiritually leading women for like 20 years. So, I, you know, I've been sharing my story. But to come out with it and publish it, that was hard because I knew my family was going to be angry with me. I knew a lot of, you know, the person who molested me as a child who I considered my father was still alive. Yeah. And, like all of this stuff, I had to face that. You know, I had to face all of that, but I had to do mm -hmm. it for me and I had to do it for whoever reads it and it inspires. And I'm that's all I I'm glad you said that because yeah. one of the people were saying here that they're so afraid to come out with their story because the people are still alive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that, that I was afraid too, but when I was about to publish the book, I said, okay, so Nina, think about how hard this is going to be. Uh, how many people mm -hmm. are going to be angry with you? Uh, how many people are going to call you a liar? You know, and I put myself through that emotion. I actually put myself through it. What would this feel like? Oh, it's going to feel terrible. I'm not going to like this. I put myself through the whole thing. And at the end of it, the question was, mm -hmm. is it worth it? The answer was yes. The answer was yes. Even if they never spoke to me again, the answer was yes. So I pressed publish and there you go and yes my family got angry with me and yes my mother didn't speak to me for like a good six to eight months yes but it actually opened up dialogue about eight months later you know what I mean so um you know sometimes you have to go through the pain there's freedom in the pain there's a lot of freedom in the pain and if you're trying to make an impact in the world you need to come at it with authenticity you have to be authentic and the only way I can make impact in all the women that I've been helping it's because I'm real. I keep it real. I, I say it real. I, and uh, I wrote a book about it. You know what I mean? Like, I literally wrote a book. 
So, um, you know, I think that if you want to be authentic to yourself and you feel like this is something that's really on your heart, really weigh those options and say to yourself, is this, mm -hmm. is it worth it to me? Is it worth it? If it's not, then don't do it. You have to be on board with it being authentic and 100% worth it to you. Otherwise, don't do you it. You know, Nina, first of all, thank you so much for sharing that with me because I think that's such a big piece that people need to hear that you actually went through the process and then asked yourself, this could happen. They may never talk to me. They may hate me, but it's still mm -hmm. worth it. And you went through all that first and then you went, yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. And it took me like a month of going through it. It wasn't like overnight. Oh yeah. Is this going to feel? No, I, I had actually said, okay, Sit and hit, sit here for a second. Yeah. How's it gonna feel when your mom yeah. doesn't speak yeah. to you? Because that's yeah. gonna happen. You know, how does this feel when your when your aunts or your cousins or whatever, uh, you know, shame you for writing the book? How's that gonna feel? And I sat in it for a minute. You know, because actually, Sandy, I think that's one of the things we miss the most is we don't sit in our stuff. Like it's okay. We don't sit in. We're like, well, no, we're good. We're okay. If somebody asks you, you could be going through the worst time of your life. How are you? I'm good. No, you're not. You're not good. And it's okay to say you're not good, you know? And, and, and there's nothing wrong with saying you're not good. And most people anyway, Sandy, honestly, ask yeah. you because they just, it's a thing to ask. But, you know, when somebody's asking you because they really care about you, then don't lie to yourself or them. Pause and say, do you really want to know? Yeah. Because I'm going through something, right? And somebody who cares about you is going to listen. Yeah. So as you can imagine, in my friend group, I'm knowing, you know, for spreading joy and changing the energy, switching everything positive. And I do remember a few years ago, I was going yeah. through something really tough. And so I said to them, listen, I'm not on my A game. You know, I've been injured. I, I, I wasn't able to move for like six months. Imagine me not moving. Right. Mm. Guess what? Mm. I lost some of my friends quote unquote mm -hmm. because they're like not a lot but a couple they were like no 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 mm -hmm. you you're the upbeat one you always spin things to be positive you bring joy and I'm like but I'm a human being right. and what I realized is for so many years I felt like I had to be superhuman like if if I was down no one wanted to hear it. and guess what yeah. for a lot of them I wasn't so I had to let some of those friends love them from a distance i say because that's yeah. a horrible way to live to feel like you can't show all your emotions and oh when yeah 100 percent I mean, but look, so some people are leaves, you know, the wind blows yeah. and they blow yeah. up with the wind, you know, they're just a bunch of leaves, you know, uh, so you can't do anything about that. And they, they you pull out yep. from that experience, what you can. And I do this with even the toxic things in my life. I pull out, okay, this was so yeah. toxic, but what can I pull from this? And I always pull the joy. I always pull whatever is yeah. beneficial to my growth and my learning. And then I let the rest of that go because I don't have time to be dragging yeah. around some stuff. I don't have time. Right. We, we were not promised tomorrow. And if we're dragging on yesterday for today and dragging on today for tomorrow, it gets too heavy. Want, I don't no. know. Do you and your mom have a good relationship now? We do. We do. Yeah. It, it, it took some time. It took she was very hurt over what I what I wrote. Right. Because, I, you know, being molested by my stepfather, which she was married to at the time and being abused ah. the way I was. It was hard for her to admit it, A, to admit it and to swallow that I told people. She was angry. She was You angry. know, I'm so proud of you, and I wish I was near you to give you yeah. a hug, because by you doing that, and you know this, and I'm sure you hear it over and over again, you allow others, and you give them permission to tell their story. And yeah. that's why when I saw your big lead-in about you're not alone, so many times we keep our story so private because we feel ashamed mm -hmm. or embarrassed and you know we feel like we we don't deserve to have all the joy in life and then you tell people and you're like holy crap there's mm -hmm. so many others mm -hmm. you know yep that yeah that's that's a true statement sandy i think that that's what made it even more worth it to me because when the book came out 
I had people coming to me crying and hugging me and I'm like, okay, uh, that's nice, you know, but they were going through it. And, uh, you know, they started admitting to me how they were molested by their brothers, how they were molested by their uncles, how their teachers, molest like it, it became like this thing where people confessing to me everything that they've been through. And they're like, we've never told anybody, but your book made me feel like I can tell people now. That is so cool. Like, oh my gosh, then it, then it's worth the sacrifice. Then it was worth the sacrifice. Right. Because if you can pull instead of keeping because then I, I don't know about your your family, but in my family, you kept all that stuff no. secret. You don't talk about the garbage in the nope. house. You know, you, that garbage yep. stays there. You stay quiet. You know, so me doing that was like sacrilege. You know, <laughs> like how dare I? But I, I don't care. I still live in my truth. I still stand in it. I know what happened to me. I know what is true. And I, I, you know, as angry as you might have gotten, oopsies on you. You know, if you can't admit the truth, <laughs> if you can't admit the truth, that's not my problem. You know, I, you know, you have to kind of be a little bit tough skin like that in order to get through that tough time because it's going to be really yucky. It's going to be really yucky. Oopsies yeah. on you. Oh my God. Oopsies on you, I, I remember <laughs> years ago, I don't even know who this woman was but she came over from India and she was teaching a yoga class and she was like a guru, spiritual leader. And she said to people, you know, when you tell your truth and you're standing in what she called peace, love, and joy, others may not like what you're saying. They may not even receive it in the right way. But it doesn't mean it wasn't meant to be heard. And we were like, whoa, that's big, you know? It's, it's like what you're saying. You, know, you were speaking your truth, even though you yep. knew it may not, and you knew it wasn't going to land well. The bigger, most important thing, right. it served right. you well, and then phew, the world. Right. By the way, right, right. Yeah. Exactly. By the way, and there was a, is. it hasn't come out yet, but I recorded um, on my other show, Let's Keep It Real for Men and Women. This guy came out and said he was raped at 10 by a family friend and for years he kept it in because he didn't want his father to feel guilty because the guy was living in a farmhouse on their property and a good friend and the guy also said he'd kill him if you tell the truth right. and so it didn't come out till 33 and he worked through from 33 to 55 and now he's in the process of writing book but his thing is i'm sure similar to yours in that he doesn't want people to have to suffer that long you know, he wants to make it easier mm -hmm. on them exactly. and know that you're not exactly. alone, no matter what it is. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to ask that. Is that part of, you know, I know you do a lot of coaching, you do a lot of shows. Is it that you want to help people understand there's another way versus keeping it inside for all those years? Heck yeah. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Like, you know, one of the things I always say is I want you to jump over the hoops that I had to jump yeah. through. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want you to have to go through the hoops. I want you to jump over the hoops because there is freedom on the other side. There is freedom on the other side. And I, I am now the woman. I, I wish I had this woman back then because mm -hmm. this woman took me a while to build, you know, and a lot of it I did alone. A lot of it was with the support of my family, of course, my husband and kids. Um, but a lot of it is hard work and it's on your own. But that's why you have people who are coaches or mentors or leaders or therapists that have been there, done that, and already want to get you through it quicker. It's a, yeah. it's a quick way to go through this, you know, uh, if you're willing to do the work. That's why I only work with um, self-led women, like self-led, heart-centered women, yeah. which means that you are willing to do the work. If you're not willing to do the work, I'm definitely not your coach because I keep you accountable. I make sure that you're doing the work, like all that kind of stuff. But it's because you have to be willing to say, man, today I feel like crap. I, I do. You know what I'm saying? But I'm gonna, I'm gonna, and I, yeah, and I'm gonna get up anyway, uh, because I feel like crap, but it's not the end of the world. So I'm gonna get up anyway and do what I gotta do. You know, that's just the personality I am. That's the, the, the kind of person I am. But I also am very empathetic because I've been there, done that. I mean, I've, I was, you know, you name it, I probably have been through it, you know, um, and, you know, and I, I feel like if, if we've gone through that, what are we doing with that experience, Sandy? If we're not impacting mm -hmm. another life, what are we doing? We should be impacting other yeah. lives, right? Because otherwise, we're just, 
we're just living? Mm -hmm. I no. I think we need to we need yeah, to live with intention. In All right, place. I want to try to get two more of these in. The first one is Sure. I think I know who this is from, but when you're telling your story, they've heard, make sure you're on the other side of it. Because when and I've heard this too, so you're empowering yourself, that means you're empowering others versus reliving mm -hmm. it. How do you know when you're on the other side of it? They mm -hmm. want to know. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you are completely on the other side when you start the process. I thought I was, right? Because you think you can talk about it and you're fine. Well, until I had to do uh, like a whole mind map and break everything down of what I've been through. And I looked at it and I had to go through each because uh, I wanted the book to be real yeah. and raw and authentic. So I went through the scenarios and what happened to me. That re-triggered things. And I was crying a lot. And it was a lot of boo-hooing at the, at the dinner tables and stuff like that. But it also was cathartic, right? So how do you know you're on the other side? There's no real answer to that. You know what I mean? Because the, the truth is, is you may be able to think, oh, I'm good. I forgave them. But if something comes and triggers you, yeah. that doesn't mean you I can agree. through it or are over it. That means it still hurts. You know, that means it still hurts. Shit. You know, you've been, if you've been raped or uh, molested or abused or neglected, it hurts. And that doesn't mean that you're stuck there. That just means you have an emotion mm -hmm. because you're a human being. Right. So it's really difficult for somebody to say, now you, now you have arrived. There is no arrived. Every day is a working progress. And every day you get a little bit freaking better. You know, I can actually look at you in the face right now and tell you that I have been abused and molested and raped and all of that. And I'm not breaking down and I'm not boohooing in the corner yeah. anymore because I've gotten stronger. But that doesn't mean yeah. that the story yeah. doesn't still affect yeah. me. You know what I mean? So I think that I don't know if there is a thing that you'll know when you get to the other side. I think the only time is making sure that you don't have um, all of these bad uh, trigger moments where every time something's mentioned, you break down completely. You might yeah. not be ready, you know, but do the work every day. I mean, you're still going to figure it out. Even as you're writing, you're still going to figure out, oh, shoot, I thought I could do that. Maybe not. I'm still work it out. <laughs> I always say like every day, if I feel like I've arrived, <laughs> I'm probably going to go to my next life. Like, you know. Right, right, right. Exactly. There's, there's no arrive. This is a yeah. journey. This is a marathon. Okay. You know, so yeah. Yeah. That's my answer. Did you ever feel as if, okay, I'm good. I'm going to paraphrase because this is a long question, but way too hard. Okay. Uh, I don't need to do this. I like my happy life. Like, why do I want to relive this and go through this pain? This, Young ladies, like, I got a good life, I got a husband, three kids, and then I started digging, and it's so painful. I just think maybe I should quit. Did Nina ever feel like that? Mm -hmm. um, um, I don't know if I ever did. I kind of have the attitude and personality that I do things afraid. Everything I see that makes me fearful, I, I face it. I like doing that in my life. And so... Um, I don't know if there was a moment where I said I didn't want to do this. I just knew there was a moment where I said yeah. this shit is yeah. hard. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, like this freaking hurts. I don't like it. I did have those moments. Um, but I also tell people, you know what? Do what's right for you, too. Like, if you feel like you don't have to go there, don't go yeah. there. You don't have to. You know, like if your life is good and you are going forward and these things don't trigger you and they're not something that's relevant in your life, then why are you even going there to begin with? You know, for me, for, for me, it was because I know that I had a lot of, you know, I had a kid at 15 years old. I had another kid at 21. I got divorced eight years later. Like I've been through a lot of stuff. So I knew for me that my life wasn't written for me. I knew I wanted to use my life to impact mm. other people's lives. I knew that. You know, I didn't know how, I didn't know if I was going to be valid. I didn't know if anybody wanted to listen, but I knew that I wanted to. Now, if this person feels like they have a happy life, happy family, they can keep moving on forward without ever being triggered or angry or having hangups. What are you going back to? <laughs> then don't do it. You know? It's working. It's working. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. I mean, but if you have things that you see, you're like, 
um, you know, you're really having some hang up about things mm -hmm. and you really can't get through that. And it's an emotional blockage for you and you can't reach something and you're self sabotaging your life, your family, your, your relationships, then maybe there's something that you need to work on. Otherwise keep having your happy life. There's no reason to mess with things up. In, when true that. By the way, this woman's making a comment and she said, and this is true. Not all women. But why do so many women feel like they should do it on their own? Once I reached out for help, oh man, oh man, was it so much easier. Well, because we're kind of trained that way, aren't we? I mean, we're kind of trained to, when you're the girl, or at least let me speak for my, for my house. When I was the, the girl, the, the oldest girl in my house, it was always about clean your room, wash the dishes, wash the, you know, wash your clothes, you know, get everything done, blah, blah, blah. There was no, th there was no such thing as crying yeah. or feelings. That wasn't even a thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you cry, I'll give you something to cry about type of thing, right? Women are just built differently. We are built to um, kind of, think like um, strategic people that take care of, of their husbands or spouses or partners, take care of the children, take care of the house, go to work, bring home the bacon and cook the bacon. You know what I mean? That's just how, that's just how we are. Unfortunately, because we end up being, you know, we have that masculine power, right? That power structure where we think we have to do it all. And the truth is, is that we can reach out. There are women out there who are more than willing to get into the trenches with you and pull you out. There are just, I'm one of them. I mean, my, my clients never leave me. They love me, but that's because that I don't, yeah. I don't leave them. You know, I don't leave them um, because I'm like, you know what? We're going to get through this together. You're not alone. You will never be alone. Not as yeah. far as I'm concerned, unless you kick me out, yeah. you have to kick me out for you to be alone, you know? And that's what we do. And I think, uh, I think that's what it is. It's just the way yeah. we are built as women, emotionally, mentally, Physically, that's how we're built. And there's nothing wrong yeah. with it until there's something wrong with it. Right? <laughs> Nina, 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 I have to say, you, and I'm sure you get told this a lot, but you can feel your positive energy. You can see the light Thank coming you. around you and shining and guiding you to serve others. I mean, it just beams from you. Not that you don't have your moments, because uh, I'm sure uh, you do. We all do. But I can see it in every ounce of your being. And I'm so glad that you're sharing this with the world. You, I really appreciate it. And I appreciate you taking the time to come on. Hey, I got something to say. But before we go, tell love them it. every which way they can find you. Yeah, so... Straight Talk, No Sugar Added, or Nina Perez, which is N-E-E-N-A Perez. Uh, my, my actual website is being rebuilt, but the Straight Talk, No Sugar Added website is built. But yeah, I have a podcast. I have my book. Um, yeah, you can find me everywhere. Everywhere. I'm omnipresent. So Straight Talk, No Sugar Added. And if they added, wanted to coach Nina Perez, with you, is that the way they would look you up too? Yeah, they would look me up every one of those ways. You can get in contact with me, and I'll be more than happy to, you know, even just have a dialogue and cool. see if we can work together. All right, my hey, I got something to say. Ladies around the world and men who are supporting us, Nina and I, I would really appreciate it if awesome. you would share this. So don't worry if you haven't seen it from the beginning. When we're done, I'll record, and I'll put it on every freaking platform. So spread the word. Nina, thank you yes. so much for being on. I really appreciate you taking the time. I know my, it is perfect you. for International Women's Week coming up. Woo -woo. Nina's in the house. And you know what I'm going to say until next time. <laughs> Toodles. Bye, Bye, Nina. Thank you.